Riley Green is finally back. Will the Orioles give Grayson Rodriguez the call to the bigs after the All-Star break? Join me today where I provide you with the best must-add players heading into the All-Star break on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. Matt on has the night off tonight. He will be back tomorrow, though. You can find us on all social media platforms and podcasting apps. If you're listening on one like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. Also, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already hit that little bell below it subscribes to the channel also gives you a notification every time we drop a new episode and lastly but most importantly subscribe to us on the subtext website on subtext you get a one-on-one personalized texting uh opportunity with matt and myself you know at this point in the year it's critical that you stay locked on with us and we can provide you with all that info extra information that you need to help you get that coveted every day of championship so join us on subtext today we talk fantasy baseball all the time we talk regular baseball whatever you need us for we are there 24 7 on subtext and guys real quick swing for the fences on sleeper picks and pick and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code Locked On, And you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. See Sleeper's terms and use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Locked On Fantasy Baseball fans, we have a fully loaded episode for you. As always, let us be your team seek weapon where I provide you with the best must-add players into the All-Star break. Heading into the All-Star break. All right, folks, let's get into this one. You know, as, as you can see, I'm here by myself today. You know, Matt left me to my uh, lonesome here, but I know you guys are here for fantasy baseball, so let's talk. First up, we got a good one for you, and it's Riley Green. Riley Green is officially back. He's played two games so far. His ownership is flying back up. It's up to 58% owned on Yahoo. He's got four hits over his first, you know, two games back. He is currently four for seven, so he's been absolutely raking. Today, as I'm recording on July 9th, he went two for five with a homer. On the year, Riley Green's batting over 300, six homers, 19 RBI, six steals. Looks like he's picking up right where he left off before he went down with the injury. And I think Riley Green is the biggest must-add heading into the All-Star break. If he's available in your league, it's kind of that pause that podcast moment. Go see if Riley Green's available. If he is, you make that cut. If you're not sure who to cut for Riley Green, once again, subscribe to us on subtext and we'll give you the answer right away on who you should cut to get Riley Green back. But this kid, you know, there's a reason he was one of the top prospects in all of baseball. I actually believe he was number one prospect at, at uh, you know, some point, maybe uh, two years ago. But, you know, 22-year-old Riley Green kind of going to carry that Detroit team for the next couple of years until they, you know, put some other bats around him. But I think the steals are legit. The power is legit. The batting average. I don't know if he stays at 300, but, you know, he definitely has upside to stay close to there, if not like 280, 290-ish. He was always a pretty solid batting average contributor in his time in the minors. If you don't know who Riley Green is, I'll give you a little, you know, information on him here at 20 years old in the minors riley green 2021 124 games 485 at bats 95 runs 25 doubles eight triples 24 homers 84 rbi 16 steals he only got caught stealing once he uh hit 301 that year so riley green's the real deal man i think he's finally starting to click you know, not everybody is Ellie De La Cruz, but, you know, uh, Riley Green, you know, over his uh, first 146 games in his career, he's finally starting to, you know, fit the bill as one of the most um, highly tattered prospects over the last couple of years. Let's go from uh, an old, from a new guy to, you know, an old vet, old grizzled veteran that's still out there getting it done. He actually had, he had just come back from an injury as well. And let's talk about Joey Votto. Now, Joey Votto's back in action as well, and he's, you know, kind of been hot and cold here to, you know, um, you know, start things back. But you know what? The last few games, Votto's been looking pretty good. Um, his um not including today. Well, no, let's include today. We can talk about today too. He did go 0 for 3 today as I'm recording, but one, two, three, four. Out of his last six games, he's got four homers. 
He's got six, eight, nine, ten RBIs over his last six games. You know, Votto, Votto looks pretty good. It looks like he's going to be able to contribute. He's been hitting sixth in that Reds lineup. We know we got all those young, solid bats in front of him, like McLean and Ellie. So I think Votto can contribute, you know, in the RBI department. He can definitely contribute in the homers department. Uh, Votto is a career 297 hitter. I don't think he's going to hit 297 anymore, but hey, he could hit you 265, 270 in that range, in my opinion. As recent as 2021, 37 year old Joey Votto hit 36 homers, had 99 RBIs with that 266 batting average. I could see him getting on that type of pace where the homers really, you know, are legit for Votto and, you know, the batting average is not killing you. The RBIs are going to be solid. Joey Votto's 30% owned on Yahoo. First base has kind Kind of been, you know, a little bit disappointing this year. There's been some some names that have stepped up, but you know, I think Votto is definitely going to be somebody that could help out if you have a Rizzo that's slowed down, or if you're just hurting at the uh, position in general, NL only league stuff like that. Get Joey Votto on your roster. We actually, if you don't like Joey Votto, I got another uh, first base eligible player here for you, and it's Spencer Torkelson. Spencer Torkelson, you know, another Detroit Tiger, another young buck Detroit Tiger. He's kind of been picking it up lately. I know he started off slow. I know his career has started off slow. He hasn't really been, you know, like as good as Riley Green has. But you know what? Over the last week or so, he's starting to look a little bit better, and I think he's turning it up. I think we talked about Torkelson maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. 250 over the last week, a homer, six runs, four RBIs. So not great, but you know what? He's stringing together, you know, a nice run of games here over the last, you know, looks like almost two weeks here. He only has one game where he doesn't have a hit. You know, he's got one, two, three, four, um, little three, two hit games. One of those was a two homer game on the 29th against Texas. So I think Spencer Torkelson's coming into his own. Once again, this might be a little bit of a deeper league type of play, AL only type situation. Torkelson's 27% owned on Yahoo. I think it's worth the chance to see what Torkelson could turn into. He was another kid that was, you know, very highly touted prospect. Let me see if I can grab some of those minor league numbers here for from uh, Torkelson to kind of give you an idea of why he was so, you know, highly touted as he was and why I still still have some faith in him. You know, like I said, he's not Riley Green, Ellie Taylor Cruz type of guy. But in 2021 in the minors as a 21-year-old, Torkelson, 121 games, 89 runs, 29 doubles, two triples, 30 homers, 91 RBIs, five steals, 267 batting average. So maybe in his prime, Torkelson, Torkelson could be more of like a Max Muncy type of player where he hits you 30 plus home runs. The batting average is middling at like maybe like a 240 ish type batting average for Torkelson. But you know what? As that Tigers team gets better, I think Torkelson will get better along with them. And, you know, those counting stats will be, you know, better. But, you know, 44 RBIs and 43 runs in 86 games isn't really that bad. The play discipline isn't atrocious at, you know, 37 walks to 90 strikeouts, kind of like that modern-day type baseball player. But I believe in Torkelson. Once again, probably a bit of a deeper play here for, you know, Spencer Torkelson at 27% owned. But – you know what? If you need him, he's been hitting third in the lineup, second in the lineup for Detroit. I know it's not a deadly lineup, but you know what? There's the opportunity there to, you know, like I said, drive in those, uh, are driving those runs and score runs as well. But before we move on, folks, this episode is brought to you by Better Help. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk things through. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are to where you want to be. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnMLB to get started today. And every day as a new listeners, we've got exciting news for you regarding our podcast. Matt and I are thrilled to introduce our new campaign on the subtext website. We will be offering a personalized and in-depth experience just for you. 
by subscribing to Locked on Fantasy Baseball on the subtext website and becoming a member of the exclusive Everydayers Diamond Club, you'll gain unlimited direct access to us through one-on-one text and conversations. As a part of the Diamond Club, you'll receive instant alerts and expert opinions on prospect call-ups, injuries, and detailed waiver wire recommendations. But that's not all. We'll also be promptly answering all your fantasy baseball questions and are here to talk baseball with you whenever you want. Subscribing to our subtext service will give you a significant advantage over your competition and greatly increase your chances of winning an everyday or championship. You can find the link to subscribe in the description of this video, podcast, and on our link tree, which is available in all of our social media bios. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity. Sign up now for a free 14-day trial. With Matt and I by your side, we'll help you bring home that coveted everydayers championship. Join us today on Subtext. All right, guys, let's hop back into this. I got a bunch more names for you here. I got a couple more bats, and then I got some pitchers that you really, really want to consider adding to your teams before that all-star break. You know, get get ahead of the game, get ahead of your competition, make sure you add these guys now because, you know, if they pick it up and they perform the way that I'm expecting, they won't be available for much longer. Let's talk about that next bat, though, and it's Mickey Moniak. Mickey Moniak, I believe he was a former number one overall pick, right? Let me just double-check myself. I'm pretty sure. You know, uh, covering all these baseball players, sometimes you forget. And, yeah, he was the number one overall pick by the Phillies. Um, And, man, uh, you know, he's finally starting to perform like, you know, he was expected to when he was drafted with that number one overall pick. And guess what the thing is now? He has the opportunity because Mike Trout is out. Mike Trout's going to miss, you know, four to six weeks here with that handmade issue. And guess what? They called up Joe Adele, and Joe Adele has went down too. I don't know the severity of Adele's injury, but it looks like he's going to miss at least a little bit of time with an oblique issue. And Mickey Moniak putting up good numbers on the season, 308 batting average 10 homers 28 RBIs two steals looking looking pretty solid you know this guy Yes, all right, you know what, maybe a little bit of a deeper league play as uh, as well. You know, I hate to keep saying that, but you know what, in some of these more shallow leagues, you know, the options are a little bit better. But 16% owned on Yahoo for Moniac. I really think he's going to step up with this opportunity because, you know, he's kind of been playing well all year. He's been leading off a lot for the Angels. He, you know, hit third in his last two games, so now there's opportunities not only for him to be driven in, but to drive in runs as well. You know, Moniak has had some pretty strong years in the minors. Let's talk about specifically that 2022 was only 30 games, 125 at-bats, 22 runs, 8 doubles, 2 triples, 8 homers, 20 RBIs, 5 steals. So Moniak can steal bases. He also does have some power. He hasn't really hit the, you know, ground running with those steals yet, only 2 on the year. But I really think that Moniak can, you know, can provide you with a decent amount of power, decent amount of speed. I think I said already, but I'll say it again. 16% owned for Moniac right now. Go out there and give him the ad. You know what? If you're, your waiver wire is looking a little bit shallow this time of year and you're not really sure what to do, you need some power, you need some speed. Guy that's potentially going to drive in runs and be able to, you know, score some as well. Like I said, he's been hitting third lately in that lineup over there. For the Angels, it's not one of the best lineups in baseball, but you know what? Uh, with Otani, with hopefully Rendon playing a little bit better, Renfro. They got some guys over there that can, you know, help uh, Mickey Moniak be worth the ad, which I currently think he is. Let's move on to another guy. This is somebody that Matt and I kind of loved coming into the year, and he really just hasn't performed, you know, as we really expected. But he's still been pretty good. It's Joey Manessis. We were calling Joey Manessis the breakfast burrito coming into the year because of what he was doing over there in the WBC coming into the year for Mexico, man. He really thought he was going to come out here and just be absolutely raking. But you know what? The numbers still look pretty solid on the year for Manessis. It's 33 runs. Five homers, 45 RBIs, 284 batting average. And, you know, he's kind of just been picking it up. The power is starting to finally show. Uh, honestly, out of the five home runs he has on the year, uh, two, three, four of them have come over the last three games. So Manessis looks like he's tapping back into that power that he had last year. You know, in last year, in a short amount of time, he did hit pretty well. It was 13 home runs. Uh, in 56 games with a 324 batting average. So the batting average is legit. I think he comes into a little bit more power. The RBIs and runs are decent. He's been hitting in the middle of that Washington lineup, which is, I'll be honest with you, not one of the better lineups in all of baseball. But Manessis, 47% owned, first base and outfield eligible on Yahoo. I think he's definitely worth the add. 
let's move on to, you know, some pitchers here. And, man, this first one is somebody that I really, really, really want to talk about. It's Grayson Rodriguez. With Grayson Rodriguez, I truly think the call is right around the corner for Grayson because he's just been dominating in the minors since he, you know, got sent down, especially in June. I'm going to try and grab you those June numbers real quick from the minors. But you know what? Grayson Rodriguez was the number one pitching prospect for, you know, um, a while before, you know, Andrew Painter really came along and started doing his thing. It was all Grayson, Grayson, Grayson. And, you know, let's talk about, you know, he really, really had a bad start to the year in the bigs it was 45 innings, 56 strikeouts, only two wins, seven, three, five, the array, one, seven, four whip. Now, not everybody is going to turn around and, you know, just be like a Spencer Strider, but Grayson Rodriguez still only 20, only 23 years old. I think this kid, you know, has a lot more time, you know, to really do his thing. And um, I'm just trying to find those uh, last couple. I know he has three double-digit strikeout games uh, in the month of June there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Looks like I'm getting somewhere, guys. Bear with me here as I pull this up. Okay, okay, here we go. So in the month of June, he had a 2-2 ERA across five starts. And he... um, had 28 innings pitched. He had 39 strikeouts, and the whip was a 106. So that's who we thought, you know, Grayson was going to be. And then we could even talk about his most recent start, which came on the 4th of July. Six innings, no walks, only three hits, 12 strikeouts. I mean, Grayson, guys, he's 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 a stash right now because if Grayson comes back up and he can continue to do this, which I know he can. I know Grayson Rodriguez is going to come up, and I know he's going to eventually be, you know, an all-star caliber pitcher. Grayson's 35% owned right now on Yahoo. I went out there. I picked him up in a few of my leagues. He's just got the stuff, man. You know, he's got good, got a good fastball. He's got good breaking stuff. And that Orioles team is, you know, coming together, man. They're really looking like a competitor this year. I can't wait to see that lineup and that pitching staff over the next two, three years. And if they really keep going with this, they called up Westberg. They called up Kowser. You got um, you got Westberg. You got Norby. You got a bunch of other guys coming up that are going to contribute as well. Gunnar Henderson's turning it around. They got the you know one of the best catchers in all of baseball, Adley Rutschman. There, I just truly, truly think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And Grayson Rodriguez is going to be that ace for them. You know, through this run that they're going to have for the next few years. Once again, Grayson Rodriguez, thirty-five percent owned on Yahoo. It's a stash because I can honestly see him getting the call. You know, right after that All Star break, and they're saying, "Hey, what? Well, you know, we're really going to go for it this year and see. You know, how far." this team can get because especially they want to build that camaraderie with all of these guys you know Grayson and Adley you know came up through the minors together so he's very familiar with Adley you know he's caught for him before and you know what they they want to build it um you know like I said build the camaraderie because you know this young team's going to be competing for a year so why not get to start on it now even if they're not going to win this year let hey let's make the playoffs let's get familiar with each other let's go through this battle together kind of like if you watch basketball at Denver Nuggets team did but, you know, let's move on to this next guy. That's enough Grayson Rodriguez talk. Once again, 35% owned on Yahoo for Grayson. Go out there and stash him now before, you know, he gets the call. And then it's going to be impossible to get him, especially if he takes off the way I think. Let's move on to this next guy, though. We've talked about him recently, and it's Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn is doing what I told you he was going to do. He's kind of rebounding. He's a big second-half guy. I think he has, like, a Blake Snell-type run in him. Uh, his last start, July 6th, against Toronto, seven innings, 11 strikeouts, no earned runs, a .29 whip. Lance Lynn did the same thing last year. He came off the injury last year, and, you know, he was really, really bad for his bu- first bunch of starts. He was literally one of the best, t- you know, like pitchers in all of baseball through that second half last year. He absolutely dominated. You know, I know the ERA and the whip look really bad for Lance Lynn so far on the year, but you know what? 103 innings, 127 strikeouts. At least he's been helping you there. And let's see what this last 30-day total looks like for Lynn. I know it's not going to be beautiful, but it's definitely better. It's 30 innings, 47 strikeouts, a 440 ERA, but with a 108 whip. So the whip looks a lot better. The ERA is a little inflated. You know, it's um, it's not great, but I think Lance Lincoln pitched to a mid three mid three mid to low three era the rest of the way i think it's going to be big strikeouts as far as the wins i don't know with this white Sox team they're kind of like iffy as far as i'm concerned but i think lance lynn is definitely um going to be one of the better pitchers in the second half for you know 
for fantasy baseball teams. And I just think in general in baseball, this, this guy's got the stuff. He's a long-time veteran. I'll even give you his career numbers in case you know you want to know those. He's a career 366 ERA guy across 1,800 innings, eight, uh, 1842 strikeouts, 1,842 strikeouts um, during his you know big league career, 126 whip. You know, the whip, I, he's, it's been better, though, over the last, you know, for three years, not including this year, he has um, it looks like a 109 type whip. So, you know what? The control has been better for him the last few years. The ERA has been pretty solid the last four years. I really think Lance Lynn pulls it together. But you know what, guys? Uh, before we move on and I get you these last uh, couple of pitchers in here, I do have an ad coming up for you guys. Guys, I want to talk to you about Sleeper. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. Sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users in 2022. At Sleeper, it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories. Sleeper Picks is our real money product that connects friends over picks. Choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live, or even across different sports. Pick higher or lower than predicted stats. Only on Sleeper can you get up to 100 times payouts, share with your friends, and get rewarded together. Use the promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states, you need to check out Sleeper today. All right, guys, we're going to, you know, wrap things up here in a little bit, but I do got some more pictures for you guys. Let's talk about Jack Flaherty. Now, the thing with Jack Flaherty is it's been such like an up and down year for Jack. And uh, if you've uh, been playing fantasy or you watch baseball at all over the last few years, you kind of know Jack Flaherty has that ace upside because he's done it before. You know, you go back to that 2019 season where Jack Flaherty had 11 wins, eight losses across 33 starts, 275 ERA, 196 innings, 231 strikeouts, and a 096 whip. And then, you know, since then, it's kind of just been up and down. And 2020 was a bad year, but that's the COVID year. So I kind of throw that year out for everybody. You know, it didn't really, really count because nobody knew if we were going to be playing baseball or if we were, how many games were going to be played. So guys didn't have a lot of time to ramp up. But then he came back in 2021. Jack Flaherty had a 3 2 2 ERA, nine wins, two losses across 15 starts, 70 innings, 85 Ks, a 106 whip. And then last year was kind of just a lost season for Flaherty where he only made eight starts. Numbers really weren't fantastic. And then there's this year for Flaherty, 4270 RA, 17 starts, 92 innings, 89 Ks, and a 156 whip. Jack Flaherty still, you know, 27 years old. He is getting a little bit older, but he's still, you know, in that prime of his career. I don't know. I think this year's the figure it out year for Flaherty. I don't know how effective he's going to be the rest of the way. I think there is a really good stretch coming at some point. It looks like he's going to line up with either the Nationals or the Marlins coming out of the, you know, um, all-star break. And that's an opportunity to at least, you know, pick him up, start him against there, get some decent stats. He's 39% owned on Yahoo Jack Flaherty. His last two starts, though, have looked solid with, you know, six plus innings in each. Actually, the one against the Yankees was exactly six innings. His last three starts, all wins. Not big strikeouts in those starts, but no earned runs in the last two. The whip was a little bit high in the last one against Miami, but you know what? It, it was nine hits. The walks weren't bad. It was only two walks, a couple of slap hits, you know, nothing really. Not a lot of crazy hard contact. I mean, I think he's still working through some injuries. They're talking about, you know, his hip was a little bit banged up. So I think when this guy gets fully healthy, he is, you know, a top 50 fantasy baseball starting pitcher. Let's just see where the thing goes. I kind of just want to add Jack Flaherty at the end of my pitching staff just to see where, you know, as I said, to see where this goes because it could be ace potential if he really clicks. Like, you know, I, can't, I hate to keep bringing up Blake Snell because not everybody is Blake Snell or capable of doing what he's doing, but a Lance Lynn or a Flaherty could follow in that Blake Snell blueprint where, you know what, it just takes one little thing to click and then they're back at their ace potential, which we know Flaherty has, which we know Lance Lynn has because they've done it before. 
But let's move on to another, um, well, no, actually a pretty young guy that hasn't done it before, you know, a little different than the guys that we've been talking about. And it's somebody that I actually like. It's Matt Manning. Matt Manning, you know, coming back off the injury, he's looked pretty solid through his first three starts. Only one really bad one against Colorado, but it was in Coors Field. We all know that Coors Field is just hard to escape for, you know, pretty much every pitcher out there. Very, very few pitchers that pitched in Coors Field as their, you know, home park were ever really successful outside of Ubaldo Jimenez. But you know what, Matt Manning, first three starts, 3.72 ERA, 103 whip, 29 innings, 20 Ks. I think the young buck really, you know, has a chance to get it going. If you're not familiar with Matt Manning, he's a starting pitcher from the Detroit Tigers. And he's somebody that has had some really, really strong seasons through the minors. But he's also been a guy that's been kind of, you know, injury riddled throughout his career. And, you know, I'm hoping like, you know, I don't know if this year is the breakout year for Manning, but I really think this kid has potential to be a very valuable starting pitcher for the Tigers and for fantasy baseball owners. He's 6'6", 200 pounds. You know, he's got that big build that you like to see out of pitchers. And like I said, really successful minor league career. And um, let me get you, let's see what was his best year. Let's go back to that 2018. I know that's a long time. We were 2018 and 2019 monster years for Matt Manning and the minors. 3 to 9 ERA in 2018 with 117 innings, 154 strikeouts. And he had a strong whip that year, too, at a 119. But 2019 is really even a better year for Matt Manning with a 256 ERA, 24 starts, 133 innings, 148 Ks with a 098 whip. This kid's got a lot, a lot of upside. And I really think that, you know, he's going to live up to it because, you know what, man, uh, even last year before, you know, he, he, like I said, injury prone, he got injured last year too. 343 RA for Matt Manning and 12 starts, 63 innings, 48 Ks with a 117 whip. So Matt Manning, probably a little bit of a, you know, long shot here. 6% owned on Yahoo. Looks like he lines up with Kansas City or Seattle coming out of the All-Star break, preferably Kansas City. But you know what? Seattle strikes out a lot too, so at least he could have a chance to, you know, get us get some big strikeouts against Seattle. But if he does get Kansas City, I think that's a great start. You know, add Matt Manning, see where this thing goes. I think he has a lot, a lot of potential. I read you off some of those minor league seasons that were monstrous. Uh, I, I'm a big Matt Manning fan. I actually have an autographed Matt Manning uh, rookie card. So, you know, that kind of says enough right there that I do, I do believe in the kid. Let's move on to our last arm here, our last player in general. It's Kenta Maeda. Kenta Maeda is somebody that we've talked about on this podcast a lot, you know, over the past you know, couple of months. But for good reason, if you did pick him up before while we were talking about him, it's kind of been paying off here through his first three starts back. Uh, all have been very, very solid, you know, against uh, Detroit on June 23rd. Five innings, got the win, eight strikeouts, no earned, one whip. Against Atlanta, he was serviceable, five innings, four strikeouts. He gave up three runs, 140 uh, whip. And then against Kansas City in his last start on 4th of July, seven innings, got the win, nine strikeouts, one earned, 057 whip. So Maeda has been really good, 47% owned on Yahoo at the moment. Looks like he gets either Oakland or Seattle coming out of the All-Star break, preferably Oakland. In Oakland would be fantastic. Big ballpark, you know, team that's not very good. Domingo Oman, no hit them that day. Had to give my boy another shout out real quick. And then, you know, or if you get Seattle, Seattle striking out a lot. You know, this year they have like four out of the top six strikeout guys in all of baseball as far as bats go. So give Kenta Maeda the chance. If you know you're not familiar with Kenta Maeda, he's had a pretty solid career so far. Um, good at suppressing runs. You know, he's got solid control. I, I just think he's worth the shot, you know, especially in a league where, you know, um, or where pitching just has kind of really taken a downfall since last year. You know, coming into the year, where I really thought there was going to be about 60 starting pitchers that we could rely on as far as fantasy baseball goes, but it really hasn't shown true. Kenta Maeda, I think, could be one of those guys, you know, down the stretch where you look at that pickup and you're like, oh, wow, Kenta Maeda has really been a help to my fantasy team uh, in the second half. Once again, Kenta Maeda, 47% owned. I think he's, uh, you know, right, right, right about a must add, honestly, just to see where this thing goes. But guys, thank you for bearing with me through this you know, solo episode. I appreciate each and every one of you, our everydayers and our new listeners. You know, it truly means a lot to have you guys here with us along the way. But that's all for me today, guys. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. And thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Matt and I will be back with a new episode tomorrow. But until then, guys, see you.